So, at first glance, I can tell that this might be a bit of a problem. Well, if you know what it is, just spit it out already. Bakugo, be a little patient. I think we should explain the situation from the beginning. It's kind of a lot. So here, Traveler, just tell him what happened. And so, you explain everything from the beginning. You tell Deku how you found the tome in a library, back in your world. About how inside, there resided the crimson gem that glimmered under your touch. How it swept you up in a whirlwind of light, and brought you here, in a field of grass where you were found by Kirishima. So, you're saying that you got transported here from an entirely different world? <sighs> yes. Were you not listening to them, Deku? All those potion fumes making you more stupid than usual. No, no, I got it. I'm just a little shocked. It's not every day that you hear of such powerful magic. Mm-hmm. It's pretty crazy, isn't it? When I found them in that field, I wasn't sure what to think at first. Transportation magic is unheard of. But I know they're telling the truth. So I want to see if we can help them get back home. Hmm. Okay, well, since you guys came to me for help, then I'd be happy to aid you in any way that I can. If you want to help, then keep reading the damn tome already. Right! Hold on. Let's see. <sighs> hey, traveler. Don't look so nervous, okay? We're gonna see if we can figure this out. So, look at me. <laughs> I want to see that cute smile. Come on, show me. Show me. <laughs> yeah, there it is. Don't let worry cloud your heart too much, Traveler. It makes you feel all sick inside, you know? And we can't have that. It ruins your appetite. Hurry it up, Deku. Gotchan, I'm reading as fast as I can. There had been very few times in my life that I'd felt that on edge. Fighting monsters and creatures that towered over me. Having to deal with the hag and her nonsense to name a couple. But in that moment, the suspense was unbearable. I would have preferred a monster if I'm being honest. Watching Deku read the book wasn't that big an issue. It was his expression. I'd known that idiot since we were both brats. And I could tell that something was wrong. If there's one thing that pisses me off, it's not knowing what sort of troubles lay ahead of me. And Deku reading slower than an old woman was starting to piss me off even more. Okay, so, this tome was written in what looks to be ancient draconic. I can't decipher every single word without doing some more research, but at a quick glance- Draconic? Boy, shitty scales! Why weren't you able to read this shit then? You holding out on me? Huh? Bakugo, that ancient dialect and script has been lost to my kind for, gosh, hundreds of years now. The lots of our elders who knew how to read it were- wiped out about 900 years ago. I can read our modern script just fine, but that's... Yeah, that's way before my time. Oh, I read about that. It was because of... The calling. Yeah. Mm. Calling? The hell's that? It was... <clears throat> when my kind got into a really big war with the humans a long time ago. It, uh, yeah, not a very good outcome for us. Oh. I'm sorry, Kirishima. That must have been a very painful time for your kind. Ah, thanks, Midoriya. 
I wasn't around for it, but I've heard all the stories about it. I'm just glad that things changed for the better and we're at peace with the humans now. I don't know what I'd do without Bakuko. <laughs> peace. Humans are the scum of the earth. They still hunt and kill your kind for your bodies and blood. Well, yeah. But at least it's just poachers and not whole kingdoms now, you know? <laughs> still. Humans go off about our dragons are ruthless beasts. They should take a look in the damn mirror. Humans are worthless, greedy monsters. Huh? Of course I'm not a human, idiot. I'm a dragon soul. There's a difference. Technically speaking, you are a human. Shut up, Deku! <laughs> Bakugo, calm down. See, Traveler? Sometimes dragons find their mate in a human and the bloodline progresses without any additional dragon ancestors. The blood and the magic from their dragon heritage carries down, making humans that are dragon-like. We call them dragon souls. They don't have all the capabilities of a full blood like me, but they have improved senses and can use magic from a really early age. They also bond and age like dragons do. I think it's why he's got such a temper on him. The hell do you say, shitty scales? Nothing at all, my prince. Don't you laugh at me, outsider. You wanna die? <laughs> <clears throat> um, here, let me grab some of my books from my library. In order to fully understand this text, I'll need to do a bit more research. I'll try to work as quickly as I can. Oh, I have some tea on, so help yourselves and get comfortable. Kachan, the mugs are where they always are. Fine. I'm stealing your chair. Tired of being on my damn feet. <laughs> Go ahead. And then came the worst part. The damn waiting. We sat there in Deku's study, drinking tea and eating our rations. Kirishima was keeping you entertained with his endless prattle, while I just watched Deku as he read. It made me nervous. How his face would scrunch. How he'd bite his thumbnail like he'd read something horrible. Then he'd go off into one of his damn mumble rants to himself. Some things never changed. Thankfully, I managed to drift off before I strangled that idiot. And when I woke up, we finally had our answers. Bakugo. Wake up. Midoriya's done, but, um, judging by his face, I don't think it's good news. Great. <sighs> All right, Deku. Talk. What did you find out? Well, it turns out they were right. The gem was what opened the door that sent them here. And... Uh, do you want the good news or the bad news first? <sighs> Just pick one and get on with it before I blast you! Bakugo! <sighs> Let's go with the good news first, Midoriya. W well, the good news is that there is a way for you to return home, Traveler. The very gem that brought you here is the key to sending you back. And the bad news is that in order to do so, you have to put the gem into an altar. Okay. Is that it? On the summit of the Strihorn Mountains. Huh? Are you kidding me? What? Oh. You mean the Strihorn Mountains? The ones that are crawling with demons and beasts surrounded in monster infested forests? Deku. You better be joking. Those are the most dangerous mountains in all of Solterra. Uh, y yeah, I'll be honest. It'll be a treacherous journey. Especially since you only have a year to do it. What? what? And that was when I felt my heart drop to my damn feet. The Strihorn Mountains were literally a year's trek away on foot. 
the whole other side of the world. This was much more than I bargained for when I was persuaded to help get your stupid ass back home. You better be joking, Deku. I'm sorry, Kachan, but th that's what it says. The magic of the altar. It's only active when the stars in the Blind Seer constellation align above the mountains. When the third moon reaches its zenith on the fourth night of the harvest month. Please put me down! <sighs> God damn it all. That's... Okay. No, it's okay. We have a year until the stars align, right? Uh, yes but... Um... If, um... Oh God. What now? If you miss your chance... The stars won't realign for another 500 years. 500 years. Not only did we have to bust our asses to get to the other side of the world, to the summit of the most dangerous mountain range, we had a time limit. And if we missed it, you'd be stuck here for the rest of your life. It felt like a stone had been dropped on my back. I could only imagine how you felt. Your expression was... something I've never forgotten. It was more than fear. It was just... terror and anxiety all rolled up into one. I'd seen that expression before. Not on your face, but on Kirishima's when I saved him so long ago. And as much as I wanted to just turn on my heels and walk the other damn way, I knew that I couldn't because now Kirishima would be even more determined to help you. Traveler. No, no, it's okay. Shh, shh. Come here. It's gonna be alright. Remember what I said? I promise we'd get you back. And I'm not going to back out on it. Hey. Look at me. Shh. We'll get you back home. Kachan! Um, what's this scary look for? Map. Eh? Uh, uh? If we're going to trek across the damn world. Then draw us a map to this place. You can't expect us to just wander around the monster-infested mountains looking for some altar in the middle of nowhere. Oh! <laughs> I can do that for you, absolutely. One moment. You should come with us, Midoriya. It would be good for your research, right? What? Hell no! Like having one extra mouth to feed isn't enough of a pain in the ass. You want to bring the damn Deku, too? <sighs> I would love to, Kirishima, but, uh, I can't. I have summons from His Royal Highness, the youngest prince. Oh, really now? <clears throat> mm-hmm. Uh, you guys were lucky. You caught me the night before I was going to leave for the capital. You can absolutely stay the night and take from some of my supplies if you like. You still have that spare short sword laying around. The outsider needs something to defend themselves, and the damn market's already closed. Oh, I think so. It should be over there by the fireplace. Here. Take it, outsider. This way you can give Shitty Scales back his blade. And give me your bag. Kirishima, you too. Stocking us up. Thankfully. One thing that hadn't changed about that damn Deku was that he was always well prepared. I got us all packed with provisions to tide us over until we reached the next town. Between that and our foraging and hunting skills, we'd be set. Even with you as dead weight. At least for now. I was gonna hammer some actual skills into the skull of yours if it was the last thing I did. Once I got us stocked up, it was pretty late in the evening. But thankfully, Deku worked quickly, and we had our map. Hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Here, Kacha. I finished the map for you. Give me that. I hope it's concise enough for you to follow. I try to map everything out in a very straightforward path. I also made sure to lay out towns along the way where you'll be able to resupply should the need arise. I'm a little tired though, so I'm going to go get some sleep. Ah, thanks for all your hard work, Midoriya. We really do appreciate the help on such short notice. Sleep well, okay? <laughs> of course. It really wasn't a problem. Kachan, you know where everything is. I'll see you in the morning. <laughs> Guess that weakling turned out to be of some use after all. Bakugo. Midori's always been helpful. And pretty selfless. Plus, he cares about you, you know? <sighs> Don't remind me. <laughs> ah, well. Guess we should rest up. By the sounds of it, we, uh... Have quite the journey on our hands, don't we, traveler? Here. I'm gonna set everything up in front of the fireplace so we'll be nice and warm while we sleep. Yeah, well. Hurry up. I'm exhausted from all your whining today. Aww. Huh? I didn't whine at all today. Huh? <laughs> sure you did it. There we go. I laid out her bedrolls. So, let's all try get some rest. Aw, you want to share my bedroll again, traveler? <laughs> I don't mind. Come here. There you go. Nice and cozy. Wings are pretty handy, huh? <laughs> you call them way too much, shitty scales. We settled in for the night. The sound of the rain pattering down on the roof above our heads would have been calming any other time, but that night, it felt like an omen. I slept like shit that night, and I wasn't the only one. You were tossing and turning like a fretful whelpling the whole damn night, even under the comfort of Kirishima's wing. I couldn't blame you, though. The news Deku had given us was poor. Such things didn't make for a restful night. It weighed heavy on your mind, the worry of not knowing if you'd ever see your home again. Come the morning. I had to get you both up and out of bed so we could start our journey. But of course, you two had to make it difficult. Oi. Get up, you two. Deku's got food for us. Morning already. Fuck, oh. go. It's barely dawn. Can't we sleep a little longer? Don't you dare pull that blanket over your head, shitty scales. Oh. Ow! Don't kick me! I'm up, I'm up! Good. You two, outsider. Up. We leave right after breakfast. Huh. So mean. Come on, traveler. Let's get some food in us. Mm, that smells really good, huh? You go on ahead. I'll pack her things up so we'll be ready to go after we eat. Ah! 
Good morning. Please help yourself. I made a bit of a heavier meal for us since we're all going to be doing quite a lot of traveling today. Would you like tea, milk, or juice? <laughs> Good choice. Hurry up, Kirishima, or I'm going to eat all of this myself. Oh, no, I'm coming. <laughs> Don't bully him, Kachan. As much as I hated to admit it, Deku's breakfast was a pretty good pick-me-up after that shitty, restless night. After we ate, all four of us gathered our things and made our way out towards the gates of Ambermore. I had the map, you had your new short sword, and Kirishima, as always, had his annoyingly endless enthusiasm. Thankfully, we didn't stay in Deku's company much longer than we needed to. My patience for him was starting to wear thin at that point. We parted ways with the idiot and began our journey. We had quite a ways to go. Bye, Midoriya. Thanks again for all your help. You're welcome, Kirishima. Safe travels, you three. Hiroshima, you've thanked the damn Deku enough. Let's go. We're wasting daylight. Ah. I'm just glad it's nice and cool today. Breeze feels pretty nice, eh? Ah. The heat can get kind of unbearable this time of year. Sun gets all sweltering, and Bakugo gets all sweaty and stinky. Kirishima, what the hell? Shut up. <laughs> all right, all right. Eh. Speaking of that, though, it's been a bit since we bathed. Let's keep an eye out for a spring or a river on the way. Guess I could go for a bath. Just keep walking, slow pokes, or I'll leave you behind. We're right behind you, Bakugo. I always love the smell of the grass and the trees after it rains. It's so nice. Reminds me of when I would play in the forest back when I was a whelpling. Hmm. Do you have forests like these back in your world, Traveler? Whoa, really? <laughs> That's great. I guess there's some things that stay the same between our realms. Hmm. Hey, does. Does your world have a blue sky? And big fluffy clouds like those? What about stars? Yeah? That's amazing. I guess in a way, if you're ever feeling homesick, you could always look around you and up into the sky. Look at those big soft clouds and the stars at night. It'll remind you of the stars you have back home, you know? <laughs> I really like seeing you smile like that. When you're happy, I feel happy too. I led the way, following the map Deku had given us closely. It took us through a dense forest with trees that stretched high into the air above our heads. I kept an eye out on our surroundings ahead of us while you two talked on and on about the differences between our worlds, the similarities they shared. We traveled for about four hours or so, when I heard the unmistakable babble of running water. I checked the map and sure enough, there was a spring up ahead. It's so crazy that your world only has humans. There's seriously no elves or goblins or... or dragons? Huh? Wait. I smell water. Oi. Over here, you two. There's a spring. You're whining about wanting to wash up, so let's do it now. We'll fill up our water skins after. Yes! Sounds good to me. Ah. I can't wait to get all cleaned up. 
Walking for days without bathing makes you feel so grimy. It's this way. Through these bushes. I can hear it just up ahead. Ah! There it is! It looks so pretty. Bath time, here we come! I'm gonna put my cape far away from the water. So you don't end up soaking it again like last time, shitty scales. What are you waiting for, outsider? You gonna bathe with your clothes on? Woohoo! Gah! I'm gonna drown you, you stupid lizard! Ugh. Huh? What are you acting so weird for? Stop standing there and get in. You can't waste too much time bathing or we won't cover enough ground before sunset. Ah, <sighs> oh, the water feels so nice. Well, you gonna undress or what? <sighs> Either way, I'm getting in. Stand there and stay dirty for all I care. Hmm? Oh, I think they might be shy, Bakugo. That's their problem, then. They can be disgusting if they want. I'm getting in. Though I guess I don't need to since you soaked me, idiot. <laughs> Here. Take a piece of soap. I took one for each of us. Oh! Huh. Aw. Oh. It was really nice of Midoriya to lend us all these supplies. Hmm. And it doesn't have a strong smell. That means we can use it and not worry about prey smelling us when we're hunting. He really is pretty smart, huh? Yeah. The damn idiot's good for some things now and then. <sighs> the water feels good. Mm. Huh? Look away. If you're being a wimp about undressing, you don't have to worry about that. It's just a bath. We won't look at you at all if it'll make you feel better. Look, we're turned around. Are you in the water yet, Traveler? Good. Here, have some soap. Let me know if you want me to get your back, okay? We took some time to get cleaned up. Felt kinda nice to bathe after days of travel. And for you, it felt freeing to rid yourself of the dirt and grime. Even though you were acting weird about bathing with us, snapping at us every time we even so much as glanced at you. We eventually finished up and got out to dry off. We took time to have a small meal and refilled our water skins before we continued on. We had half a day left and I didn't want to waste time. A year might seem long to most, but when we had to travel across the damn world in that time, it wasn't nearly enough in my opinion. After a lengthy day of traveling, we found a good spot to set up camp which was fine by me because I was getting tired of listening to Kirishima bellyache about the walk. We'd walked further than this plenty of times. I'm not sure what got into him that night. He was a pain in my ass. We settled in and got a fire going. All that was left was to handle the food situation, and I wanted something fresh that night. Oi, shitty scales. Go and find us some food, would you? Huh? Oh, Bakugo, I'm so tired. We've been walking all day. Oh, so you want to travel with the outsider, but you don't want to help feed him, huh? Guess they're going to go hungry then. What a shame. Huh? Oh, wait, no, I'll go hunting. Ah, uh, I'll be right back. I think I scented some deer when we were coming in. I'll make sure to bring back plenty of meat, okay? Gotta make sure we keep fed so we can keep up our energy. You go get the damn deer already. Okay, okay. I'm going.
damn dragon. <sighs> the hell are you staring at anyways? Huh? My necklaces? Huh. Well, these aren't just some stupid baubles. They're trophies. Curious, huh? Why the hell should I tell you anyway? You're an outsider. <sighs> Fine. Just stop staring at me like that. I swear to the gods you picked that up from shitty scales. <sighs> like I said, these aren't just some measly trinkets. You have to earn these. Yeah, earn them. These necklaces were given to me for a reason. Each one symbolizes my strength. Huh. The red one? Huh. Yeah, I guess you can touch it. I knew that what little trust I had built up with you had been ruined because of shitty scales and you two catching me trying to sell the book. So I figured giving you this would let me mend things a bit. So that when we pass through the capital city, you wouldn't suspect a thing. <laughs> Letting you paw all over my trophies was a small price to pay for getting my hands on that book later. I wanted you to trust me. It's from when I slew my first griffin. You wouldn't believe how resilient those damn things are. Took it down after a couple grueling hours barely spilled even a drop of my blood. I took its whole head. <laughs> that was only 12. The blue one? It's made from the bones of my horse. <laughs> oh, come on. It's just bones. Don't be such a whelpling. Be more careful with it. Could have damn well snapped it, outsider. This one. It's important to me. I don't want to hesitate to snap your fingers if you break it. Understand? So get out of my face. You don't need to know about my past anyways. So I'm done explaining what these are for. Wait. What's that? Oi! I saw something shimmer beneath your shirt. Hold still. I said, hold still. Where'd you get this? This shit is obviously expensive. There's no way someone like you could afford something like this. You didn't steal it, did you? The last thing we need right now is the damned royal guards on our asses. Shitty scales got this for you. There's no way you'd have enough coin for something like this. He used his scales, didn't he? That stupid lizard. I told him not to do that shit. He loses his damn brain when he sees something shiny and he doesn't think. It's fine. How are you to know it was wrong of him? I've told him time after time not to use his scales to trade for items. Why? Because, idiot. It puts dragon materials into the market. It makes it more sought after, and that makes it even more dangerous for Kirishima and his kind. Shitty scales was just being his usual stupid, nice self. He's got a damn soft spot for you, so that doesn't help. Just keep it out of sight when we're traveling. You have a big enough target on your back as it is. With that gem and all. Just because it's hidden away in your satchel doesn't mean it's safe. The magic that comes off of it is strong. And if I can sense it, who knows who or what else can. Huh? 
Shitty scales. Kirishima. Hey, Jiro. You better speak up if that's you in there. Because I'm two seconds away from slicing your head off from your shoulders. I was already on edge. But Shitty Scale was not answering to his given name. That was a sign of danger if I've ever heard one. Then one set of footsteps became two. Became three. Then four. I drew my swords because I knew what was coming and it wasn't going to be good. You weren't fireproof like Kirishima. So I knew using my magic was out of the question here. I wanted you to trust me. And injuring you wasn't the way to do it. So, I was bound to the use of only my weapons. Show yourself! Cowards. Hiding in the brush. If you want to fight, then come get one! Well, well, boys. Look like we found some valuables. <laughs> Shit. Bandits. Overheard the lot of you talking about some magic gem. Look now, at that one. Why don't you two come quietly, eh? Don't make this any harder than it has to be, boy. We have you and your little friend there outnumbered. <laughs> you think I'm surrendering to a pathetic whelp like you? Not a chance. Outsider, get behind me! Suit yourself, then. Let's get us a payday, lads. Come on! Damn it. Where the hell is Kirishima? Outsider behind you! Stay close, idiot. Don't give him your back. Don't look at me like that. I can do this all day. It was a long fight. It would have been over quickly if I didn't have you to worry about. My magic would have taken those milk-fed cowards out in an instant. But you didn't know how to fight. You barely knew how to use the sword we'd given you. And that was our downfall. Kirishima was right. I should have trained you sooner. I didn't expect to get ambushed only a few miles away from the outskirts of Amalmore. As the fight raged on between me and a dozen of those filthy bandits, one of them grabbed you. And the cry you let out distracted me. Damn it! Get your hands off them! Distracted in battle, are you? How pitiful. <laughs> now, what was it that you said about not giving us your back? Get your filthy boot off my damn back or I'll have your head! <sighs> the mouth on this one. Bit too noisy for my taste. Let's fix that, shall we? <clears throat> went out like a light. Now, for this one. You should probably go to sleep like your friend. Don't squirm so much. You'll barely feel a thing. You were terrified. Worried that these bandits were going to kill us both. Despite the bandits' warnings, you squirmed and struggled as best you could. Cried out for Kirishima. Did everything in your power to escape their hold. But there was nothing you could do. No help that would come to you. And then... It all went black. <laughs>